investigate the mysteries of the green sea turtle's life journey, from the black sand beaches of Costa Rica to the rich waters of a Florida lagoon, and back again. Adventure with David Godfrey and the Caribbean Conservation Corporation as they seek answers to how these primordial creatures return. After 20 or 30 years, swimming through thousands of miles of open ocean to lay their eggs on the very same beach where they were born. Next on Wild Odyssey. dawn rainstorm. Nothing unusual for August at Tortuguero National Park in Costa Rica, where it rains nearly every day and the humidity feels like it's at a steady 100%. The downpour doesn't deter David Godfrey and research assistants with the Caribbean Conservation Corporation, or CCC, from their daily rounds. Every morning, a team travels up and back along a five-mile stretch of volcanic beach to investigate sea turtle nests. Here's a nest that's been uh, dug up probably by a feral dog or a, from the village that's come down here. You can tell because the, where the nest has been dug out, it's very narrow where a dog would dig like this and throw the dirt back. So I'm gonna go ahead and bury it back up and, and maybe give it a slim chance of, uh, of continuing to incubate and uh, emerge successfully. Feral dogs are not the only predators that dig up sea turtle nests. By far, the worst offenders are human. Yeah, this nest has been poached. Right. You'll see by the holes here, yeah. from where the poacher has used the stick to try and find the nest, and obviously taking the eggs. The taking of sea turtles, in particular green turtles, and their eggs has been going on for probably millennia here in Costa Rica. There are a lot of cultural beliefs about the consumption of sea turtle eggs. Many believe it's an aphrodisiac. CCC has been educating the local population about the effects of overconsumption and demonstrating that preserving the sea turtles for ecotourism is more profitable for the local economy. Monitoring poached eggs is just one of the Caribbean Conservation Corporation's many goals. CCC's mission is to study and protect sea turtles throughout the wider Caribbean and Western Atlantic, basically in this part of the world. Here in Costa Rica on the Caribbean coast uh, lies Tortuguero and Tortuguero National Park. It is home to the Western Hemisphere's most important green turtle nesting beach. And our goals are to continuously monitor this population so that we understand what's going on. One way of monitoring the population is to count the eggs as the female sea turtle lays them and then excavate the nest after the baby sea turtles have hatched and crawled away. By carefully piecing together egg fragments, researchers can find out how many of the hatchlings made it out of the nest successfully, and occasionally they may run into something even more exciting. We've come upon a nest that has recently emerged, that is most of the hatchlings have already come out and made their way to the sea, and there are a few live hatchlings left in here. So we let them go and make their way down the beach on their own. We don't consider it part of our job as scientists to come along and, and, and save every last few hatchling because it's really it's part of the way of things that some don't always make it. But since we're here and there are some here, of course, we love saving these little guys and, and giving them a chance at, uh, at survival. Find out what happens to these hatchlings after their adventurous journey north when Wild Odyssey returns.
Indian River Lagoon on the east coast of Florida is one of the next stops in the long journey of young green sea turtles. It's a green turtle. That's a green, that's not missing now. Dr. Lou Earhart from the University of Central Florida and a group of his graduate students have been conducting an ongoing study in the Indian River Lagoon, which is right behind the Archie Carr nesting refuge. And what they're doing is studying the juvenile population of turtles, in particular green turtles, that inhabit the lagoon. Keep that hand away from the mouth, and then, and then a, a, a rear flipper, and, and haul it in. All right. Uh, beauty, too. The Archie Carr National Wildlife Refuge is a nesting beach for sea turtles closely monitored by the Caribbean Conservation Corporation. Archie Carr was a famous sea turtle biologist who founded the CCC and started the program with nesting turtles in Tortuguero. They didn't know it at the time, no one knew it at the time, but this beach is not only important to the loggerheads and the green turtles that nest here, but this exact region of Florida is very important to the very same turtles that Dr. Carr started studying and trying to protect in Tortuguero. We've learned through genetic analysis that the juvenile turtles right behind this beach in the lagoon are from Tortuguero. Left prefrontal is discolored, yellow. It really is a nice, nice green turtle. Yeah. And, and nice and fat, robust. Researchers from the University of Central Florida have discovered that in addition to originating from Costa Rica, green sea turtles in the lagoon behind the refuge come from Mexico, Brazil, Africa, the Mediterranean, and of course from the nesting beaches in front of the lagoon. It's very possible that this turtle was hatched from a nest in Costa Rica and uh, got caught up into currents that carried it around the Atlantic for a period of years. After leaving the shores of Costa Rica, sea turtle hatchlings seek refuge inside large mats of floating seaweed that drift with the Atlantic currents. They feed on small plants and animals in the mats until they grow to be juveniles. And at some point, they come floating back by this area of Florida, and for some unknown reason, they're cued to swim on in to the lagoon through some of the many inlets along this stretch and spend the next few years of their lives here in the lagoon. The Indian River Lagoon is one example of what marine biologists refer to as a developmental habitat, an area where juvenile sea turtles go to forage until they become sub-adults. Then, during the next stage of their lives, another great mystery is being investigated through the use of satellite telemetry. One really exciting thing that scientists have begun to discover through the use of satellite telemetry, where we can watch their migrations using satellites, is that turtles very definitely do move, at least as adults, in very specific directions. Earlier experiments done in Bermuda, like those now being replicated at the Indian River Lagoon, have outfitted sub-adults with satellite transmitters. And when they leave Bermuda, they take a beeline straight towards Nicaragua, going against all kinds of different currents. We theorize that they're able to use the Earth's geomagnetic fields to determine where they are on the globe and actually make decisions, if you will, about which way to swim based on these magnetic beams. <laughs> because sea turtles have such a wide geographic range in which they live during their lives, protecting them is more difficult since they can be damaged by different threats in each region. The most significant threats facing sea turtles are, are caused by man. Habitat loss, and deterioration or degradation by pollution. But on this beach in particular, in the Archie Carr Refuge, one of the most significant threats is development. We see a lot of this land, it's prime real estate. Everyone wants a view of the ocean, everyone wants to, to retire down here. People can live on the beach and sea turtles can nest if we do it wisely. If we keep our lights dimmed during the nesting season so we're not disturbing hatchlings or nesting turtles, and if we build our homes just far enough back from the beach where we're not having to build seawalls or other things to protect our property in a way that would affect nesting. All right, Doc, when you're ready. Since the creation of the Archie Carr Refuge, there is evidence that protecting the beachfront has enormous positive returns. The big news here at the Carr Refuge, I believe, is the fact that uh, during the 80s, we had just a, a little bit of green turtle nesting. Most years it was under 50. 
Now, in recent years, since the refuge has been created, green turtle nesting is actually rising exponentially. So that summer before last, we had 2,400 green turtle nests on the Carr Refuge. That's the endangered one, the one that was nearly extirpated. A dead of night adventure to view the primordial birth of these sea turtles, next on Wild Odyssey. After a journey of thousands of miles that may take green sea turtles anywhere between 25 and 50 years, they finally return as adults to the same beach where they were born. In this case, Tortuguero, Costa Rica. Tortuguero National Park consists of black sand beaches on the edge of a rainforest plentiful with wildlife. From the rare two-toed sloth to the common forest hawk, a predator that will feed on young sea turtle hatchlings. The Caribbean Conservation Corporation has been monitoring the sea turtle nesting season for over 40 years. Most of their work happens at night, when huge female turtles crawl up on the black sand beach to lay their eggs. This is pretty much peak season, and tonight has been a, a very good night for turtle nesting. There's been plenty of turtles out, so we should be able to get, catch quite a few tonight. Before the researchers hit the beach, all lights had to be turned off and a night vision camera employed so as not to disturb the nesting turtles. So what we're going to do is we're going to head down the beach and we have a turtle that's about to lay um, and we shall um, get that one as it's laying and then we'll, we'll work with it as soon as it's finished laying its eggs. All right, sounds good. Well, this is a, a fully grown uh, reproductive uh, green turtle that's um, here on the beach in Tortuguero, Costa Rica. Uh, this turtle is, is anywhere from uh, 30 to 50 or 60 years old or more. She's just finished laying her eggs. Given the decline of sea turtle populations from their historic numbers, the Caribbean Conservation Corporation's concern with these creatures is well-founded. People who have been studying sea turtles for a, a long time, we're convinced that certainly sea turtles numbered in the millions, perhaps even the low billions, who knows, around the world, but certainly far more than there are now. Early explorers talk about so many turtles in the water, they look like stones that you could walk across the water on. This green turtle's finished the nesting process and is trying to make its way back uh, to the sea. It's encountering a little bit of uh, flotsam and jetsam here on uh, Tortuguero Beach. They have a lot of uh, logs and stumps and things that make their way on the beach, but they're very persistent and managed to find their way over most of this stuff. Now she's on the final downhill slope back to the ocean. She's been on land probably for several hours, and uh, these turtles spend 99% uh, you know, of their lives in the water. So it's quite an arduous process to come up on land and feel the full weight of its body. Uh, so they're very tired, they use a lot of energy. So she usually has to rest every few steps to gather herself a little. Okay, Douglas, one of the research assistants, had, has found a green turtle which is just about to lay its eggs. So we're going to go up on it um, and count its eggs and try to get the whole nesting process. So if we just continue walking over here. When Wild Odyssey returns, a big mama turtle cunningly disguises her nest. <laughs> 